Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Film Diaries. Today we are going out and shooting Portra 400 between three different cameras that I have. My Olympus Stylus Zoom 120, uh, which is a little point and shoot camera. My Canon 1V, which takes EF glass, like my 5D Mark IV or 1DX Mark II, C200. The nice L-series lenses, which are awesome. And then my Leica M6, which is the most expensive one. And I just wanna show you guys how it looks uh, across all three cameras, the downfalls of each, the benefits of each. Mike's gonna be the model. He's not actually a model, but he looks like one today. He's got a style, man. <laughs> Check out Chicago. I wanna show you the difference between all three of these, even though Portra 400, the same exact film, is in all three cameras. Now, the, the negative to this one is that you can't overexpose it unless you change the actual DX code. DX code, which I haven't done in this camera before. You can put a little sticker on the film canister that tells the camera to overexpose it more instead of just being the stock that you have in there, the 400 speed. So you could trick it into thinking that it's 100 speed or 200 speed, so it overexposes in auto exposure. Uh, but I'm just keeping it as is, so it's gonna expose it, uh, whatever the scene is, to the 400 speed. And then I'm going to overexpose on my 1V and my M6. Um, typically what I do is I just try to overexpose the scene a full stop over um, what I'm spot metering on so that I get that overexposure, something you want to do with film photography versus digital. You never want to overexpose digital because you can blow out the highlights, but film is really capable of um, protecting those highlights even if you overexpose your exposure. Let's get into it. We're going to head over to this little pocket of light first. I love shooting at noon, anywhere from noon to two o'clock in the city because you get all these cool light reflections. Oh, this is so insane. I like the primary colors, like the red and the yellow here. Can you like look down? Yeah, that way. The capabilities of these two cameras are that you can dial in what you want the camera to be set at speed-wise with the M6. So on the back I have it set to 200 speed, which is a full stop underneath the 400 speed. So I'm going to be overexposing my scene a full stop. And then I can also do that on the 1V by pressing the two buttons, the drive and ISO button off to the left, and then bringing it down to 200 speed so that I am overexposing a full stop again. Now I have a prime lens on this camera, the 1V, the 50 f1.2, and I'm going to shoot really shallow depth of field so you can see the difference between the different cameras. This is going to give you the most shallow depth of field because you have the prime glass. I think I want to go 1.4. Oh, it's going to be insane. Three, two, one. Do we look very influencers in the wild right now? Uh, that looks too posed. Yeah, I want to do like a, maybe a top down, just look down. Yeah, yep. So it flashed there because it didn't think that it had enough light, so it just did a direct flash. And I want to keep that on so you guys can see if it thinks the image is too dark, it's going to do that auto flash. You can turn it off, but then your image is probably going to be underexposed. It's all in the past, love. Let's call it fast. Three, two, one. Cool. Let's call it fast love. And I don't need to wonder. It's all in the past. Let's call it fast love. And I don't need to wonder if you're on my mind. This reflection is really cool. And it settled now. Maybe if it wasn't twice, you were there and gone. Was it always more than play alone? And we just need to roll the dice. It's all in the past. 
you're like one of the chaperones at the roller rink. Just crushing it. Just crushing in the middle, backwards. Yep. Except those guys were always on four, two by two, like fours. <laughs> I think a walking backlit right here could be good. Off to the side, ready, set, go. Tight, that's gonna be awesome. Every time I think, I think about what we were before. Am I in my head, or was this all just nothing more? Every time I think, I think about what we were before. Am I in my head? While there are a million things I could say to break this video down, there were a ton of variables. There were different lenses, different exposures, different apertures, even different focal lengths. So I'm sorry about not changing all those variables. Uh, I hope there was just more to it than that. We uh, processed and scanned all this on our own. Gene developed it, Mike scanned it, with all of his negative supply goodies and his Fuji GFX 50S and a macro lens over a light bed. Then we converted all of it with Negative Lab Pro and Lightroom. The comparison might have been easier if we sent it off to a lab um, where they kind of decided all these things for us in the conversion process. And we could look at the images as a comparison from a third party processing it all for us. So, I mean, we had to basically try to make everything look similar in post and while still trying to pay respect to how the conversion happened naturally from negative to positive. So all of that was kind of at play as well with us trying to match the cameras and what they looked like. So some conclusions, if you're coming from digital, know that all of these cameras were using the same sensor, if you will. Um, a sensor just emulates what film cameras used to be with film in the back of the camera. It's burning light onto the actual film instead of a digital sensor, and all of them had Portra 400 in it. So it, you're all you're at the same playing field. For all these cameras, it's just a difference of the box that you're shooting and the, the glass that it's going through to reach that film. Uh, sometimes the Olympus outperformed the Leica, the cheapest one outperformed the most expensive one. I'm thinking that some of those frames towards the end with the, the color wall, it's insane. Uh, it proves the dynamic range of film and its capabilities, even in the more compact, small, um, cheap version uh, of shooting film, it can still give insane results. The depth of field on the one V was really nice, especially when it was backlit. I thought that was really good then, or with the bokeh on the 50 millimeter lens. I know not as comparable because if the 35 mil was on there, it, you wouldn't get as intense of bokeh at um, lower aperture. But anyway, it still looked very, very nice. I really wanted to push all three of these cameras in with dynamic range and harsh light and shadows. And so that's what I was kind of doing towards the end, doing split light and just kind of seeing how each one interacted with that scene. I was noticing um, that the Leica was doing real, real well with that and the 1V was struggling a bit more. But it does, like I said, it goes to show you the flexibility of dynamic range with film. You can see a lot of the shadows. You could see a lot of the highlights. It could be really exciting for you if you're trying to get into film. Maybe you have a cheaper camera, but everybody has the same quote unquote sensor if you're using like 
the gold standard, which is Portra 400, and getting that dynamic range if you're metering correctly and um, not completely crushing your shadows. So I, I really, I just hope the biggest thing that you take away from this video is that shooting film is a blast. It's just a lot of fun to do, and you can be really technical with the approach and comparing different things, uh, but just know that there are so many variab variables. As long as you're cognizant of composition and light and the foundational things with photography, you're gonna make magic because you're shooting on film, uh, no matter what camera you're using. So I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope this was just fun to watch and I wish you happy shooting. Thanks for watching. Now let's cut to some bloopers. <laughs> Hit that influence swag. Do the influence swag. Wow, I was so influenced. <laughs> the kick. <laughs> oh wow. It's for my uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, it's a shout out to Steven. We are starting a podcast called Slow Burn, so get really excited about it. We're filming our second episode today, and you should get really excited about that. Lots of really fun things happening these days. Like and subscribe. Wait, I'm supposed to say it to that camera. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe.